one thing, so I, I looked through the paper and the largest component, that the largest, I guess, protein or chemokine that was driving the age seems to be something called CXCL9, right. which is not what I would consider to be a classic uh, marker of inflammation. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about what CXCL9 is and, and where it comes from? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you're absolutely right. The, the largest contributors are not the classical biomarkers of acute inflammation. Um, those do not contribute whatsoever, actually, to the, to the clock. Um, so CXCL9 is a protein that is produced as very small protein. Um, they call that a chemokine. We call that a chemokine, which uh, is produced by endothelial cells, but mostly by innate immune cells like macrophages and dendritic cells to call the lymphocytes to the site of infection. That's what, uh, what we know about CXCL9 in cases of an infection, right? Um, so uh, in, in our cases, we do see something very different. We see that CXCL9 is produced not in response to gamma interferon, as most people would think, you know, CXL9 or MIG, this small uh, molecule uh, is, is producing response to interferon gamma. In our cases, we don't even see gamma interferon in our cultures. And there's a huge amount of CXL9 that then um, what happens is it signals uh, to, to the same cell that produces it. And it causes senescence in that cell. The cell starts uh, stops pr proliferating and starts producing a number of SASP. It becomes senescent in terms of CPD, uh, PD, uh, um, uh, P16 and P21 um, uh, expression. So those are classical uh, biomarkers of senescent cells. And, and therefore, uh, it, it has a major implication in the development of, of cardiovascular aging in this case. So it's driving the cells into senescence, but it's okay. But the own cell. Okay. Why do you think CXCL9 is such a, a large component? I mean, I mean it, it was actually by far the largest in, as, as I recall. Yes. Um, th there is for some reason, I think uh, some sort of regulation that where CXCL9 is hub. It's, it's a hub too. Mm. So when we take, uh, for example, and we knock out or knock down CXL9, we're, we're knocking that out. That, that we're basically uh, decreasing the expression level of CXL9 to, to almost uh, undetectable level. You will restore the, the aging, phen the, the, um, the healthy phenotype. You would avoid those cells go in senescent. So it's really a cause and a consequence. And I've been asked this question every, uh, many, many times. Um, is inflammation a cause or a consequence? It's both, it's both. Inflammation is produced by aging per se, but then signals back and accelerates cells to go into a senescent phenotype. Right, so we kind of need to break, <laughs> break that loop. So as we talked about a, a little bit ago, okay, interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, like the, the classic um, inflammation markers do not appear on your clock at all, or, or they're, very, they're very small, they're very low. So, so I, I guess what's the implication of that? I mean, in general, it, when I go for a blood test, right, that's kind of one of the things that we look for in terms of inflammation, what is your interleukin-6? Yeah, so what's the implication? That it's not relevant? The implication in my views is that uh, individuals, when they got the, their blood uh, obtained, they were not suffering from a cold um, or they were not vaccinated uh, at, at, you know, the day before. Uh, this is, again, the response to an infection. The response is to vaccination. CRP goes to the skies. IL-6 goes to the skies. TNF also. Uh, not in the case of systemic chronic inflammation. I think there's been a lot of confusion in the field. Um, and there is uh, no coherent data. Some studies have shown increases in IL-6. Some studies uh, have not shown that. And when you adjust for 
uh, certain diseases, then the association between IL-6 and aging is gone. So it doesn't really mean much to me, the fact that they were not repeating. I mean, I, I was not expecting anything. It was what we do here. Our approach is a, it's, it's a uh, unbiased approach. It's an, an approach that uh, it's a you know, knowing nothing approach. I'm going to try to learn from scratch. And we didn't see those coming up. Um, not surprising. It's not acute. It's not infectious driven. Uh, the one that it's in the middle, I would say, is interleukin-1 beta. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Interleukin-1 okay. beta increases in both cases of acute inflammation and systemic chronic inflammation. It really predicts uh, if you have that in sustained levels, uh, cardiovascular uh, conditions and hypertension. We published a Nature Medicine paper in 2017 about this topic. Right. Yes. So... So if I have low levels, that, that doesn't necessarily imply that my systemic inflammation is low. I mean, particularly CRP is often used as a, like as, as a marker for, are you suffering from inflammation or not? Um, and, and so this would imply that low CRP is not necessarily that telling you that much. Exactly. So um, CRP is an, is an interesting one. We've seen uh, a lot of interest in the field of cardiovascular disease for the past 20 decades, uh, two, two decades, uh, 20 years. Um, but the savvy cardiologists today won't really use CRP. Uh, it's mostly used to detect infections. Um, CRP has a predictive value for cardiovascular events that's less than 0 0.65. Um, so close to random. Um, so <laughs> we're not using it anymore. We're, we're not using CRP anymore. It's, it's, it's all times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, well, it's still in, yeah, it's still in blood tests, but I, I guess the, it, going back to the thing that you said before, we don't have good markers for systemic. And so, we continue to use the old markers that we do have, even though they're not that. That is exactly right. That's the only thing we have. And therefore it's the only thing we, we, we can actually um, use. Right. Yeah. But, but the idea would be that the IH clock and, and the score that it comes up with would be a way of looking at the actual underlying systemic inflammation. That's correct. 